Welcome to the next episode of the Cathode Ray Podcast. Steve and I are very happy to have Shank from Shank's Mods on the episode today. We're just going to have a chat about what's going on, have a casual chat. How you doing, mate? How you doing, Shank? I'm doing good. Just got off work. It's it's good to be here. I've been binging some of your um, at work. I've been throwing it on in the background and listening to it. It's been a good time. <laughs> Well, let's hope that like nobody important is listening to it too, because I mean we have some pretty embarrassing stuff on some of those episodes, especially when we're talking about hiding stuff in the woods. And <laughs> oh, I haven't gotten to those yet. So. Okay, hiding porno well, good, in the yeah. woods when we're a kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we really just uh, Shank and I have been Twitter DMing back and forth for about the last month, of just about random everything. I can't even remember where it started. Um, whether it was like the LCD, I know we first started deep conversation on the LCD PVM, yeah. which Lewis yeah, he, and I and Bob are you know tested. Yeah, he and made so, the he made the mistake of mentioning a project idea to me, and I'm like, ooh, how can we like? Yeah. <laughs> and then feature creep just took over because that's like. What project is that then? What were you thinking well, about the LCD? I was, I was like, I don't know what, you know, I was like, I don't know what to do with this silly monitor, right? Besides right. just hang it on the wall. And uh, Shank's like, oh, well, you could just like fill it with the best gear. Yeah. And turn it into, you know, a really good one. And then Pimp like, my but, it would be, but the, yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So now I'm like looking at like a new display. So I'm like, what if you threw like an panel, IPS? And yeah. then, yeah. And then like, <laughs> Taking all the guts out and, like and throw a stuffing. scaler in it and like yeah, throw in like BNC, a GBS reuse the BNC adapters. And so, yeah, we were like, and then and then we started looking at, um, well, maybe we should downsize this to the nine inch version because there's a nine inch version of that for the size. But then you got to find a nine inch PVM, which on eBay the guys are trying to sell even the nine inch LCDs for like two hundred dollars. <sighs> And uh, yeah, so oh, well, you've only got right. yourself to blame for that, Steve, by putting the oh, videos yeah, yeah. about I, it. Yeah, right. And me and Shank <laughs> just—I know Shank's got a way bigger reach than I do. I'm sure that nobody can get their hands on a Hot Wheels. Well, anything I've, anymore. I tried to be very. I've seen the impact that, like, um, I've seen the impact that on retro gaming communities that a single. Um, let me adjust my camera a bit i've seen the impact that a single person can have like when you look at um you know not obviously not on purpose but like the unintentional side effects that you can have like after digital foundry did their video on the fw 900 well mm -hmm. guess what that became essentially un like the the prices yeah. of those skyrocketed and everyone's like i gotta get me one of them so for my hot wheels pc video i realized well i could be the very thing I get so frustrated at. So instead, I try to explain, you know, try to explain my frustrations in the video and say, look, the last one, you know, during the video, I bought a Hot Wheels PC on eBay for like, a, 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 like $150 below the max, the starting bid. Like, it was, it was, they had well, some crazy. dollars below the, yeah. oh, because it was such a high starting point. It, it was like, it was like they wanted like, like $350 or something like that. And mm -hmm. I would, and as their starting bid. And I put in an offer of like $200 and they accepted it like three seconds before the <laughs> listing ended because nah. no one else bid on it. Yeah. So the thing is, you know, you have, you have, when you have someone spending, you know, willing to say, look, you know, like the example I gave in my video was Linus offering $5,000 for that. And that had the side effect of everyone thinking it was that much where his is a weird case where he says, look, I don't want to deal with this. You know, my time is way more valuable than my money and I can just make back this investment like from ad revenue. That's basically the whole thought process behind that. And um, so they did it once and done, and now everyone was like, oh, I want to do that. So when I did my video, I said, look, these aren't rare. See, just to prove it, I have eight of them, like, just <laughs> yeah. laying on the day table. <laughs> like, I went and, um, acquired, even after, like, I had as many as I needed, I acquired a few more just to prove the point of, like, they aren't rare. Stop right. trying to, so just because you're seeing this video, 
and someone struggling to get one, you know, the assemble all the pieces. Don't, don't, don't scalpers. It's not worth mm-hmm. it. You know, there's some that have been on. There's eBay. always going to be an opportunist that's going to always, even if nobody buys it, somebody's always going to list one at that crazy level. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't and, even have to be bought. And it and it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, you know, self fulfilling prophecy, because then other people will see it and be like. Oh, well, it's listed for that much, so I should list yeah, it for that much. people look at the listings. And I think this extends not only hardware, software. I mean, all these crazy-ass game prices we're seeing. Oh, it's water-rated 9.8 or something yeah. like that. There is so many gar- garage finds, barn finds, grandma finds that are left. These things are not as rare as water or at least all these game tubers want to make us believe. And... and- I totally agree with you, and I feel that strongly, and I hate the, I strongly dislike the machine of hyping up the prices of these rare things and making people think the only way to get them is to pay absorbent prices, which, you know, just creates a feedback loop, Mm -hmm. and that's why I fought so hard in my video to say, hey, they, they aren't worth that much, like, coming from someone who has them all, and yeah, has been spent uh, like two years them. hunting these, you know, and obsessed over <laughs> do, these. Do you um, have any idea like how many, and I mean, this could be just a joke question, but I, I can't even imagine how many were actually made in uh, when they actually made them new, but it had to be a pretty substantial number. I think it was a lot. I got a lot of comments from people. It's yeah. Like, I had this as a kid. I had, you know, I remember I mean, having I would this. think there's over like 50,000 of them made at least or something, you know. It's got, it can't be that that rare, but. You know, lots of at comments this point, like, yeah, lots of comments like, man, my parents bought me this, um, bought me this thing instead of a decent computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that do we think there's less uh less of the Barbie ones because maybe like they I thought think for so. girls there's they there wasn't as much money. Yeah, no, that yeah. would make more sense to me. I the... think the Hot Wheels one sold a lot and I think the Barbie one didn't sell nearly as much. Yeah, I wasn't even at, like that was the more um when I was watching that, that was the more like, ooh, thing, because I hadn't seen that Barbie one. I mean I knew about the Hot Wheels one, but I actually had not seen the Barbie one. So when uh I actually did want to talk to you about a couple of things from the video, which that's freaking awesome that you made that. It's it's already up to almost three and a half million views. Congrats! That's freaking yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's been um, it's been awesome. That video <laughs> has performed really well. Yeah, because like when the first time I watched it, it was it was like it, way when it was released, so I hadn't gone back to it in a, in a couple of weeks, and it was like awesome. But um, I did want to ask you about the warehouse that you visited uh, in there, if there was anything like cool that you know wasn't on camera that maybe talk about, or if there were any other CRTs that you saw there that you're like, I wish I could grab that, but I have to leave it behind because I've got oh, man. Yeah. trucks of other things I'm taking out of here already. It was, it was crazy. Um, that that's, that's the only reason why I'm like set up for PC CRTs is I, I didn't know much about PC CRTs at the time. I had um, that footage at the beginning, there's some really low quality video footage. That was me st- streaming. I was never planning on making a video at the time. That's why I used LGR's footage. I was streaming me going around and looking at different PC CRTs for my friend who lives in New York and I, um, and he recorded it. And then I was talking about making the video and he's like, I recorded it. And I'm like, no way. Like, awesome. <laughs> so, um, I was streaming and I would show him the back of it and he'd show him the part numbers and he would Google what it was and find out. And he said, grab this one. Don't grab this one. So I was climbing on top of CRTs, PC CRTs to get to other PC CRTs. It was weird. It was like insane. It's the kind of thing you look around. There was a basket full. Like I have a picture of like a shopping basket, shopping cart full of like I don't know if they were like IBM CRTs. Like they're the really tiny ones that don't do VGA. Um, my my knowledge of old school computers is so limited. And yeah. It was. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that. Yeah. It was hell inside of there, though, because um, <laughs> some of the rooms, even with a respirator on, um, you you could only go in for a few, for like a minute or two before you're just like because <clears throat> of the 
the mold wow. and the and the the gross like some of them still have the smell in it so it was oh, yeah. and it was so so it was water and all this stuff that had been in there and leaked in and sitting in there for years um so a lot of stuff was really it was just gross and we you know the first time it's a lot better now they've done so much cleaning of it but it was so hot um in, in the footage i'm just like panting and i'm the kind of person who's like comfortable and like i'm a native texan i'm comfortable in yeah. like 90 100 degree weather like that's just my regular thing but in there i was like dying um and but there was just so many and my sedan was bottomed out and i went back a few times like it was a 45 minute drive on the highway my suspension like every time i'd hit the slightest bump would be just <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I is had... that place still functioning? It hasn't been picked dry yet. Not entirely. It's mostly been picked dry. Okay. But because it, it's been going for two years, but they're mm. still. I think soon it will be. But they're trying to. It's a volunteer thing where they have like you pay X dollars and you come and you take as much as you want. And most of the CRTs are are like the especially the nice ones, let um are gone. Those were uh, taken a while back. I grabbed. Um, of the, tw I grabbed m pretty much entirely 21 inchers. I grabbed um, four ViewSonics, so it was a ViewSonic P225F, a P220F, a P817, and a G225F. So, um, and each one has their like tiny quirks and stuff that. They, they need attention, but I haven't been able to get to them yet. And I found an IBM P1130, I think it is. That's one of the... No, the Dell P1130. Okay. And then an IBM P275, I think it is, um, which were supposedly really nice. I got a 21-inch Apple Tron, as they're called, one of the blue ones. You know about those? Yeah, the... Uh, I mean, the actual... Wait, are these the just... PCs with the um no it's just the monitor this... it, it's a oh, 21 just a inch yeah it's uh -uh. a it's a blue it's a translucent blue and and milky white translucent oh no I'm 21 inch uh trinitron it's like and is it a vga or is it a yeah. vga or just an apple connector yeah vga oh, it can wow. work as a regular vga monitor it looks great no i've awesome. never seen that that's awesome i bet yeah, that it's is a nice 1200 by uh it's like sixteen hundred by twelve hundred, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, Trinitrons. Yeah, they had uh, a lot of the Apple computers from the nineties were using Trinitron tubes in them. They didn't. They didn't let Sony put Sony's emblems on anything outside the shells. But if you open them, it's like Sony even made the power supplies in a lot of them, and uh, what the I, tubes and all the hardware on the uh, actual yeah. chassis. What I've heard is that the chassis were made by Sony for for the Sony tubes. They made the chassis that drove them as well. Yeah, because they're all I've I've worked on a couple of them and they have it, it literally looks like you open a Sony monitor because, you know, there's really not much logic. It's not unless you go into one that's got a PC built into it. One of the two all in ones. Hmm. It's not uh, it is just a monitor. It's just a um like the one you've but so the one that you've got that you got that was a 20 incher it's translucent blue does it say trinitron on the outside of it i don't think so but okay. um from what i've looked into and i believe what i've been told those use a trinitron whereas the 17 inch ones i've been told they use a diamondtron oh which, okay which is uh i don't know how much you're into pc That's pc yeah. Bishy, right yeah okay. yeah i've heard that any, some people NEC. like the yeah, some people. Yeah, it was a Mitsubishi. I've heard that people like the Diamondtrons a lot more. Some people like the Diamondtrons a lot more. Uh, That's like the shadow mask, you know, aperture grill argument. I think it's yeah. all what you really like personally, you know. Yeah. And some uh, some things are, you know, I feel like some things look better on one and is the the other. And I like to look at both of them. I, it's hard for me to like say I definitively want one over the other. Yeah, it's when you it's have a, the choice. <laughs> it, it's a it's a different aesthetic. It's all yeah. a matter of preference. That's why there's no this is the absolute best and this isn't. You know. 
I can't imagine yeah. those monitors, like you were saying, like um, that it's all just basically a Trinitron or even a Diamondtron inside. It kind of makes sense. Like I can't imagine why Apple would want to, if Sony's got the monitor, fine. They want the best monitor, fine. You're Steve Jobs and you're like, oh, it's got to be Apple. I'm doing my Steve Jobs thing. Okay, yeah. cool. Like there's no need for them to remake anything inside of the monitor. Just put a new bit of plastic around it. So it's sort of, to me, it'd be really the, weird if, if Apple the, felt they had to make custom electronics. There was one weird thing about it, and that um, I've heard you, in order to calibrate it, you have to use a, um, you have to use their, you have to hook it up to an old Apple that uses, that like calibrates it over like the data lines on VGA. Um, so kinda they have their like, own. Kind of like the FW, like, is that, have you done that stuff? Or? Oh my God, Windass sucks. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like but, a Windows thing, but, but it's built into Apple, so it's okay. probably it's probably easier. Probably, probably it's probably it. way less less garbage. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I imagine. Yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, we could jump right over to that. Before we got on here, you were telling us that you just recently got an FW nine hundred. Yes. How I long ago was this? It was just a few months. I got it recently. Okay. It showed up. It was not cheap, but it was way, way below asking price, like the market okay. value on it. And it showed up, and it was up for a while. The bezels on it are, like, scratched and stuff, so it's dinged and scratched, but the screen is pristine, and it needed calibration. And for me, it's, I'm not looking at the bezels. I'm looking at the screen. And um, I, I said, you know what? Like, I'm a really frugal person. I don't spend a lot of money on frivolous things i like and i said you know i've been working three jobs like constantly with you know this is a tiny purchase it's like it's sure. for me being like this was yeah besides eight hot wheels monitors there's not too yeah. many frivolous purchases. yeah yeah <laughs> so like compared to what i spent on the hot wheels pc like this was nothing but like that, that's i've gotten in this weird thing where i'm like spend Spend five hundred dollars for something that will only be in a video for a few seconds. Yes. Spend yes. spend two hundred dollars on something that will make my life significantly better. Nah. <laughs> Where I'm like, <laughs> just for the videos, I'm just like, well, it's you know, it's it becomes it's like business money versus like personal money. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, they're two different yeah. worlds. Yeah, there's a lot of times where I'm thinking about that kind of stuff too. But see, even when I'm thinking about with business dollars, I I I turn into a cheapskate a lot of times. It uh, it, I mean, it blows. You and I were having a conversation about just like the price of things, and not. I mean, not, it's not limited to the Hot Wheels thing. I don't know if anybody's actually paid a lot of money. I'm sure somebody did pay a lot of money for a Hot Wheels. One or two people. As, Again, as someone who has them. Whole, don't buy it. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> of course. That was the whole point of the video. It sucked so bad that what? you read to gut it and, right. and I will say, engineer a new PC inside it. I will say there's one there's one aspect to the Hot Wheels PC I really like, and that is um, the Hot Wheels monitor, the bigger one. I think it looks great. Okay. Like it's one of my favorites. But like you it's there's a Dell monitor that's like almost the exact same. It's like supposedly like equivalent to some economy or mid-range dell monitor but for some reason it looks good to me i was huh. playing on it and i'm like this looks nice yeah well, some yeah some of those can look that so but still we were talking like that well i mean we've got the same same kind of thing you know going on obviously in the stuff where i'm working in now and lewis and i was talking about it. i mean crts are like crts are one of the most interesting things because it's it's a finite object that they're not making any more of so it's not even though everything at this point we're in today is kind of expensive and we got these crazy strains on economic chains and supply chains, th this does not affect CRTs because we're always in the, you know, limited supply kind of, uh, you know, thing. So there's not more coming available. And at the same time, um, some of this stuff is just getting crazy expensive. And then, not only that, I, I mean, I, I just found out today about a scam, and uh, it was it was pretty. I mean, it just it just all around kind of stinks uh, for a lot of people. But 
I, I was I was sitting. I was like, how do you really quantify that this isn't? It's not. It's not really a great thing because the people that are making like a lot of money off these high end CRT sales, it's most of the time like recyclers that are just selling them on eBay, don't know how to barely turn them on, and they're getting to reap these insane profits from this industry just because they're the ones that happen to know how to recycle them and they get them like i know how these recycling companies work they get paid to take this stuff hmm. like a business has to pay another business to come take it and then now those are the i mean if you look online on like ebay for example three quarters of the listings will be some kind of like recycler reseller Yep. Maybe we're in and the wrong industry, Steve. You're on the wrong course. side. Right. You're just yeah, pushing up their I, prices. Maybe Exactly. <laughs> That's all I've done is I've made a lot of recyclers a lot of money. Or, you know, I mean, I understand that just like with what Shank was talking about, anytime we're bringing attention to this stuff, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause people to go out and FOMO and buy things. Um, but, but how uh, inevitable, yeah, how inevitable is the FOMO in like, okay, we're a bunch of nerds. You know, we, we're into this stuff. We, we inherently retro areas, limited amounts of CRTs or whatever we want to do. Like, I, I, you know, I had to buy that DVD combo VCR player that I saw the other day. I just could not let it go. I felt the FOMO. I'm like, this is pristine. It's never coming back again. <laughs> I got to get it. Like, it kind of goes with, like, it fits the personality type who's into this, uh, into this hobby as well. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what, uh, like what you're like what are your do you do you often run into people shake that are like i wish i could get into crts but they're just it's just too crazy do you ever see anybody say that stuff to you um i think when people when i hear people talk about crts and crazy they're not talking about the prices they're talking <laughs> they tend to think we're yeah, the... just like, you're just crazy anyway <laughs> and and the thing is i've been able to um it's been very satisfying to show people to set up where bef before uh, people were like, oh, these things old are crazy and stuff. And it's been really satisfying to set up because in my in our living room where we have the TV and stuff set up, we have some CRTs next to some LCDs and we have a matrix switch so you can view both at the same time. And people will, you know, look back and forth and people's eyes always. It's so interesting to watch. You know, I'll watch people watch the TVs to kind of see the reaction and their eyes will slowly, their eyes will all drift to the CRT, mm. you know, it's and engaging. Like, There's something, it's a warmth that comes the, from it. And um, especially and, content that was made for it as well. Yeah. we we mostly play like video games. So like if we have, we have a lot of people playing super smash brothers melee on them. Mm. So obviously they'll go to the CRTs, put the ones playing, We'll go to the CRTs for the the latency, and the ones who are um, just wa watching, well, their eyes will gravitate towards it too. Hmm. And we, I set up an HD CRT, and we had the PlayStation Five running Elden Ring on it. One of my friend, one of my roommates was playing it, and a few friends were looking at between the HD CRT running at 1080i and the LCD running at 1080p, and they're just like, "Oh my god, this." This old monitor just craps all over the flat screen. Like, <laughs> which 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 CRT were you using the uh, which CRT were you using that time or had it hooked up to? Was it FW or was it the the Panasonic? Uh, the Panasonic. Yeah, I want you to tell tell people about this Panasonic so that everybody can go out and try to find this one now. No, because I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, cause Maybe I, once I, I get like, a few more of them, then I'll tell. Yeah, right. I was like, I don't even know what he's talking about with this Panasonic. He's like, you seen this yeah. Panasonic, him and Bob? I'm like, no, man, I don't really. And then now I'm like, oh, well, I guess. So yeah, I. Uh, um, Wait, is I, this the I, one that at 1080i has like yeah. zero lag going? Yeah, yeah that's it's 480p like and 1080. 480p, 1080i, no lag. So for me, it doesn't accept 720p. It doesn't do 240p properly. So it's got. It's not like a ultimate perfect display but if you're someone like me who um whose 480p widescreen is important um on a big screen uh with with uh and you know even this tiniest amount of lag is a big deal for when we play like smash smash melee really hardcore for me it's like something i thought i'd never own so like i was i was afraid i was just gonna have to put up 
PC CRTs out there for a bunch of people to play, but now I can just like find some Panasonics. Yeah, I think the most um, interesting about that one is that it is widescreen because you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not unusual to find a lot of CRTs, um, even that will do 480p good. You know, you got like those NECs and all those Mitsubishis that are the pro levels, like the 29 inches up to 37 inch ones. But then yeah. none of those are widescreen. And like that GameCube, man, it's got really good. Some of those games are just really good on that for the widescreen. Yeah, the, with the, the proper wide aspect patches. ratio. Like yeah. the, um, I always love to just go play with the uh, F Zero because you can turn it on whatever yeah. like sixteen by nine true aspect ratio four eighty p. Yeah, I it's it doesn't handle like I said it doesn't handle two forty p properly. Like it um it line doubles it and it doesn't look properly. And like compare, I've got a Sony Vega, or Sony Vega, excuse me, um, mm -hmm. Sony. Uh, <laughs> um, I've got one next to it, and like even with an OSSC doubling scan lines, you know all that stuff on the Panasonic, and the 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 Vega just looks better for 240p. So it's like, it's it's like for my specific application, like it's it's exactly what I want. So that's what I'm are you loving. using to get the signal out of the GameCube for that? What the the, the carby or something like that? Or I I'm a I run mostly on Wii's because okay. like um that the for the most part Wii just does everything you want. Uh, we have four Wii set up right now, and the main one uses a Wii Dual, so it runs uh, my entire for the HD CRT. The entire signal chain is HDMI. It runs through an HDMI matrix. Okay, switch. so the Wii Dual out, uh, and then it's is the uh, and is that coming out of the um, at four eighty p or is it already yes. up? Okay, it's coming out at four eighty p. And yes. you said the Panasonic is totally good with four eighty p input, so it's real nice for you guys. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good lesson though that people should realize is that there's it's it's there's not really one CRT that. Even Absolutely like the not. very best. That's why we there's hoard not, them. Cause <laughs> yeah, because there's not like, it's like, oh, this one does these two things awesome and it sucks at all this other stuff. Or it's like, this is really good at three quarters of the things I need, but it still doesn't do everything. There's yeah. always, there's always like, well, you got to have one for this and one for that. Yeah. I think right now the, the big thing that's really untapped, um, there's a lot of potential in... You know, if people are kind of looking for a, a blue ocean where you're not fighting tooth and nail for a, a good CRT, um, get yourself a time sleuth and start measuring HD CRTs. Because originally we believed, you know, it was rumors everyone assumed that all HD CRT, even me, if you look on RetroRGB's podcast, you can see the exact moment Bob blew my mind and told me that no... Not all of them have lag. All yeah. the Sonys have lag, but some of the other brands don't have lag. And you uh -huh. could get a really good sleeper that nobody's heard of for 10, 20 bucks. And people have been just, like you said, they've always overlooked them and yep. always just, eh, nah, they're probably bad because it's HDMI when. Or they've there, tested at a different there's resolution. Others, right. There's other there's gonna be others out there that are gonna be kind of probably good, like what you've got. That's yeah, just I, no one knows about. Yeah, that's why um I've I've got my time sleuth and I've I've told my friends in the local area, like if you see an HD CRT, um, let me know because I wanna just test it and document it to let people know, like, hey, here's the kind of um people in the scene to be like, Hey, here's here's some info. But um it's the kind of thing you, you have to, the, the ones, the best ones, anything that's like got a famous name or something on it is going to be stupid expensive, but there's always going to be ones that people don't know about. And until the lids are blown off, you can figure out what those are. And then, um, like, let me, sh let me, here's one of my favorites. I, I was us. tweeting about this. So this little guy right here. Look at this. Oh, key. yeah, yeah. I saw this okay. picture. So yeah. this thing is, uh, it's a nine inch tube, VGA, the most, if you look at it, it looks like 
junk. You know what I mean? Yeah. It looks old. Um, I would have typed that at school. Yeah. Looks like it's it should an, be sitting on like an accountant's desk or something. Yeah, it's a name you've like. 92. It's from a brand called W E N Win, and so um, name you've never heard of. All that stuff. Well, um, it looks pristine. Like I run 480p on that. It is one of my top. Like, it is one of my top. <laughs> monitors I've ever seen now. Like my friend just got it for me and gave it to me, and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> where where so, did he find it? Yeah, um, he found it from a friend that got it from Computer Recent. So. Oh, okay. So well, I that's kind of funny. I uh, <laughs> I went out I went out this morning uh, myself and rescued a little CRT, and uh, it was pretty funny. I, I found it on Facebook. It was ten bucks. It was this guy was literally nine minute drive from me, and he's like, "Ah, oh, I'll meet you out in the Burger King parking lot in the country." And I'm like, "There's only." He's like, "Meet me at the Burger King," and I'm like, I text him <laughs> back. I'm like, "There's only one Burger King in your town, right?" And he's like, "Yeah." So he shows up in this good old boy truck, and he's a huge, you know, truck. And he's like, "I come across these all the time, man." I'll say, and I'm like, "Yeah, tell me if you find them." And it's just this goofy. Now, normally, I wouldn't think much of these things. I think I might have that same one. Hold on. Really? <laughs> Hold on. So, Let me check. Yeah. I'm gonna but, be right back. We go. You go. So the people like. So this one, the reason I grabbed this specific one is only one okay. reason. So. It does tell. Right, it does have so a radio. it's not quite okay. the okay. same one, okay. but it Let's is see. pretty close. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> close. They both look like spacemen. <laughs> yeah, it's like a different color scheme. <laughs> yeah. What inputs yeah. has yours got? Shane? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it's yours got have composite? A composite? Oh, yeah, yes. Got yes. See, you're, it is. It's the same. It's That's the same. yours is like the the premium. Mine's the economy mono because I don't have like the radio and stuff built in. Oh yeah, uh, yes. This one does have a radio. Yeah. Is it color? Good. No, it's black and white. That's what I assumed. Yeah. So it's black and white, but it works perfectly. I got a you know a power supply that I could hook up into it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show it off. Yeah, I think the, I up. think that was a FOMO at a thrift store. I got like yeah, I just saw I that mean, and was like. It was ten bucks. It works, and it, and the thing is, is like, it's it's sure it's black and white, but it has. I was like, it has composite input, and it um, it it's super sharp. Like I can't. Really? That's the thing. A black and white tube, even with just composite, like it is super sharp and detailed. So I can't wait to show some people that. But cool. Nothing. Uh, nothing like the VGA, but definitely it was it was fun to get for ten bucks. So yeah. Steve, could that be sharper because it's black and white? Like it's not yes. using a chroma yes. or something like that? Right? Yes. Yeah, because they don't have so. a they don't have a um they basically have infinite definition because they don't have like a um a mask or a grill they have to go through. So there's no like defining features. It's just like Am, am right. I explaining that right? Yeah, yeah well, I get the, it. The, yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. is is there's so you can always find this you can find these insanely high resolution black and white CRTs that are, and they, they're all like um, security, hmm. security cameras. And they were like 800 to 1,000 line monitors was no problem on those. And uh, even Sony made a little black and white one that's like a nine inch PVM that is, it's got just composite, but it's just a black and white tube. And uh, same deal on it, it's like a thousand lines. And they weren't making any color tube at a thousand lines like in the early '90s, basically, on a PVM when this was made. Third the colors, the third the lines, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's like it was. It was. Um, but yeah, that that definitely improves the sharpness. And uh, the guy who's funny, he's like, I got a green one and a red one, but they none of them have composite. And I'm like, I'm okay, you know. You, you know, just I don't, I don't. I mean, like, I don't need a house full of just. Yes, radio you, radio TVs. I've got a, enough. Bigger. Think how cool a matching set would look on this show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eight of them, maybe. Yeah, that yeah, would be right. those just videos right back there. Here, right there. Just right there. I'll just <laughs> set them up on a shelf right here. Right, because otherwise you'd have to run an RF in, some sort of RF. Yeah. Oh, my God. That yeah, that'd like, be awful. Yeah. That's, I know people I mean, while really good that, RF but... can look like composite, it's still going to be. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, I'd rather just not. I guess. Yeah, yeah same thing. If I see one, it's not composite. 
I'm so let's let's jump on. Uh, we're kind of jumping around, but let's we're getting some good topics here. We were talking just briefly with you. You you got that cool VGA monitor, but then we were talking about the Time Sleuth. Um, oh, and yeah. Lewis and I love to talk about the Time wow. Sleuth because it's just silly. It's like so. Let me. It's let like me the show silliest you stuff. device, and we get like the nerdiest on this thing. Oh oh my gosh, I love it. So let me sh- let me tell you a story. So I've always been a big stickler for lag. Like so when I finally got the. Th- so a time sleuth was like huge, you know, was a huge deal for me. So what really, I, I, I didn't buy one for a while because, you know, it came out when I was in college and I wasn't, I was kind of short for cash. And I'm like, oh, I need to prioritize my money here. And I remember uh, in a discussion with some Melee people as they were switching, we were switching over to flat panel monitors. And I'm like, hey, we need to be mindful that, you know, these, these Eon adapters while they may be lag free, yes. While these um, GC video and stuff, th- while they may be lag free, LCD panels have their own inherent issues of latency. How fast the panel transitions? One millisecond monitors aren't actually one millisecond. Stuff like that. And basically, I was the um, one of the guys there. Basically, was comparing me to an anti vaxxer because I didn't believe, you know, because I was saying that LCDs had some degree of lag and we should be cautious, <laughs> like, you know. Especially those early ones as well. Don't listen to Shake. He's just against LCDs. And because, because I wasn't a top player, you know, everything, because, yeah. um, you know, I don't spend a whole, I, I play Melee, but I'm definitely not a top player. I'm more on the technical side of, like, things like working on the consoles and, and stuff. So, but... Because I didn't, you know, this was before I had a channel, before I had all this stuff, so um, nobody, I was a nobody. So, like, but that just, like, that was, like, a super villain moment for me, where I said, like, fine. And so, I assembled this. I'll be back, right? <laughs> you wait, I'll so, be back. I, like, something snapped. I'm like, I will, you know, when they compared me to an anti-vaxxer on that, I'm like, <laughs> all right, that's it. Um, so, let me show you. This is one of those Game Boy things? Yes, I, okay. So, let me show you. Oh my so, gosh. <laughs> the toolkit. So, first let's start with <laughs> the... Your own, your own suitcase. <laughs> oh yeah. So, I went crazy on it. So, I have my time slate, of course. Um, so, in it we have... So, I'm going to set it down here. So, we have the time sleuth. Mm-hmm. And then we also have, um, obviously, the adapters. So, the adapters are like kind of the key part. So we've got a VGA, so we can run VGA. Yeah, VGA, yep. That's just um, a simple, that's just that simple one you get basically off of Amazon, right? Yeah. And then uh, with a VGA to BNC adapters. Yeah. So then we can run that. You can break out uh, RGB HV, sure. Yeah. So then I also devised this little board here. Um, uh which is it's a it's a teeny little board and it takes RGB HV and it puts out RGBS. Your one <laughs> Your one is so much nicer than my one. This like, is my like one a, that does that. Like, I got janky wires going around the place. Yeah. I designed you know, but... so I designed this little thing. I actually <laughs> sent one of these one of these little boards to Citrus too. I'm like, "Here you go, man." That's nice. Like, thanks yeah. for designing Turns this." Turns out thing. Shank Mod's a little bit more professional than me. I like it. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, back when I Back, back when I had that time to PCB actually make the order. Okay. Yeah. So, and then also I have um, a little VGA to SCART thing. So then I can run this into SCART for the people. But what's it who... taking in? So in that VGA, it's taking in it's taking so in I... RGBS and then so I take. It SCART. So what I would do is I take this, okay, and then yeah. I'd run it to here, which would mm. turn the RGB into HV into RGBS. And then um, I would run that to a yeah, Okay. And I've got makes some, sense, sense. I've got a VGA cable in here so that I can run VGA. So what's that? What is that? Is that, was that, that was that SCART adapter like something that was made or something? What was that thing? Yeah. Just something I found on eBay. It's just uh, this to. Oh, that's really? um, that's very similar, Steve, to what you might use out of the uh, Mister, out of the I/O board. Okay. I, so in that scenario, in the exact same thing that Shank's doing, I used my Mister VGA to SCART cable that I built myself 
to okay. do the same thing okay. and it, it's a cable so i've got this oh like, yeah, yeah four meter long chain yeah. to do all this which which shank has in this very nice little yeah. compact yeah. thing instead mm -hmm. bunch of vga changers so then i can swap stuff connect a whole bunch of stuff together don't oh it's we're just getting started though <laughs> uh, so here's some bnc to rca you can't really see it it's an anti-static bag but bnc to rca adapters okay yep. yes with rca to bnc and vice versa it's so nice pvm BVM. five of each right. yep and um so, and I've also got here, uh, so it can do HDMI. So I have HDMI to um, DVI, DVI and then uh, VGA to uh, DVI. Sure. Mm -hmm. Just the good time. DVI A. Sure. So for the analog, so for monitors that use that only for some reason. Uh, then we get to where it gets also, so I have a little battery bank. Yeah, I was asking power you about the time that. sleuth. Sure. Yeah, to yeah. power the time sleuth, um, and then I've got the HDMI cable, a charger for this, a power cable for the time sleuth, and then I have this, which you've probably seen before. Oh, what is right. That okay, so that's breaking out oh, of the scar. What is, is it? it? HDMI. Oh, the HDMI component. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So oh, this right. Does, okay. So there's some that are lag free and some that have scalers in them. So this is the lag free one. So okay. it's powered by HDMI, so it doesn't need any external power. Mm. So I plug HDMI into this, and I get component video out. But since uh, Luma is all you need, you know, the Luma with that is all you need to test it for composite, I can run this to composite. Okay. And for S-Video, I have this little adapter Yeah. here, so then I can run it into S-Video. So I, I don't get color, okay, yeah. yeah. But it sends it to so, the Luma and the Chroma. So you are getting, oh my goodness. So and you just, so you just solved like an issue by just that silly little adapter is just letting it, uh, get okay. Component Thanks. composite and SV. yeah. So and it's then like even we've been sitting around like scratching our head for how the hell do you get to this point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it is. it's like five dollar adapter. <laughs> Yeah. So, and for oh. the people that do uh, SCART over composite, you know, composite over SCART or whatever, okay. mm, like yeah, whatever their setup is. So, like now, if anyone comes to me and tells me my setup doesn't lag, I can just scientifically tell them uh. to. They're they're dumb. <laughs> right. I mean, come on. the The closest you're getting is plugging your console directly into a CRT, but. Yeah. Even then, you're going to have something there. You needed all those things. I've used almost all of those same things in the same way. I was getting, I had been bodging in, uh, I'd been using the Antonio Villena adapter, which uh, is for the, it's basically designed for a mister. And it's it's got yeah. the uh, RGBS to component and S video circuit powered off, but it's powered off VGA pin nine. So you got to okay. run that in somehow. That's the only thing on that, that device. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if this um, my VGA to um, my VGA HDMI to VGA adapter puts five volts down the VGA line. My one didn't. I, I I'm not the same one. I know there's there's the same thing. They all there's a million of them. You look probably the same. just make a little injector thing. There. Yeah, that's what I had been or, doing. Or run um, or bodge your own five volts onto it. You know what right. I mean? Right. That was gonna be the next step. I've been doing that to get uh to get uh I'd been using a similar solution out of the GBS control. And I had bodged uh, five volts directly from the input to the um, to pin nine of the GBS's control to to make that whole chain work. Yeah, and I've been really impressed by something I didn't expect with this kit is how useful it is for testing monitors. Like I can quickly take any monitor and see, oh, is it working? Okay, is it working? Oh, yeah. What mm. resolution? You know, can I get a picture? You know, using any display thing, I can check all the all the resolutions, all the different um, input types, and I can you know video types, video connectors. So I can quickly not only test uh, lag on stuff, but I can also see does this monitor turn on? Like does does it even accept set. whatever? Because you're sending that signal, and you can break that out in any. See, that's really good because we're talking about 
I don't know how many times you go in somewhere and you like look at a monitor and you're like, yeah, can I test that? And then you bust out some gaming console and yes. then half the time the person's pissed off because they're like, yeah, it's not for sale anymore. Because <laughs> they go on there and then they look it up online while they're sitting there watching you. It's like the same guy. He's like, he's like, what do you want with this? What What do you want with this? And I, I he's like a reseller on on there. And I'm like, I just like them, man. If you ever yeah. see them, just send me pictures of them and I'll tell you if I'm interested. <laughs> I'm not like, yeah, they're awesome for retro gaming. Look what they do. It's like then he'll think he's got something. And again, this is not a. The last time I had you, you're right on that one, Shane. Because the when I picked up the BVM 9044D, the nine inch one, I just took my Mister with me, and I asked the guy. I said it was like a store, and it was real weird. It was an electronics repair store, but the guy didn't know how to test the BVM. I was like, oh, skeptical. <laughs> but uh, he let me test it with a Mister. He's like, what's that? Same thing. And yeah. uh, it, so that's even even more convenient than a Mister because I still needed to plug in the power. Well, then you, but see, when you pull up a, uh, that, that time sleuth, nobody knows what the hell that is. It's like, God. and you're not putting a game on the screen. You're putting flashing cubes the and they're in like, black. is that mean it's broken? And you're like, yeah. no, you're, you're like, like, oh, look at broken. this intermediate, intermediate, the, the issues, see the screen, all the <laughs> yeah. errors, like, <laughs> see how it's flashing. It's not supposed to do that. I'm, I'll, I'll oh, take like, it off your head. We need it. We need a time sleuth firmware that flashes error, error, error. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, oh, that's like, uh, it, Dan. I would yeah. love just like the the idea in my head. I would love a time sleuth that does way more resolutions and has a test test function generator in it. Like that is a dream device to me. Like a test, what a test pattern? Like two forty, like two forty p test suite built into a time sleuth. Oh yeah, imagine that. Would that. Be awesome yeah. goodness. That would yeah, be... where you could just feed that in and not. Yeah, that would be incredibly, uh, incredibly convenient. Um, yeah, so it's kind of funny because we, that's a great tool to go in and yeah, it can help you. Um, but I find it too funny that sometimes, sometimes when you try to go like ask to test people stuff and if they know, they like think it's expensive and then they're like, no, you can't test it. <laughs> no, you can't come with your lag tester. I had somebody. So there was, uh, we were all talking about this D32, Sony the BVM eBay? D32 that just sold on eBay this week oh. for $8,100. Like oh. $8, well, then there was the and, A32 that sold well, for twelve k. <laughs> well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the D1, let's stay with the D1 first. <laughs> Because, yeah, this is – so the D1 – but here's the here's the disappointing thing about the D1. The D1 sold by a recycler who I've been tracking for years in um, from when I was living in Tennessee because they're like an hour from my new home in Virginia. So I was like, maybe I can make a deal with them where I just go buy all their stuff when they get it in. But they went to a uh, – you know, during COVID, they went to a lockdown policy. They weren't letting any customers on their site. So they've never changed that policy. And – uh I noticed they had this D on there and it wasn't, it was tested. It did. They just plug it in and it, they showed the initializing, which is literally the first 10 seconds of it turning on. And me and like, I told all the people in my discord and on Patreon. And so I knew I was like, Oh, this is going to get people really fired up. And so everybody starts messaging, Hey, we're in that area. Can we come bring our remote and just see how many hours are on the monitor? And they're like, no, you can't do that. And you can't, you can't even come pick it up if you buy it. They had to. They were only going to let us freight it, so they would have made a freight to me one hour lay away. So, uh, I just I was completely blown away though that people would pay that kind of money, knowing nothing practically about this monitor because there was no way of knowing the hours and there's no way of knowing even if it functioned. And, and I think the the attitude behind that is is it's like well, where else? Is Am I, you know, do I have any, mm. if I want a D32, do I have any other options? You know, it's the kind of thing, do you take a chance? I think it's, you know, it's... Well, well they think their... that I'm just going to send it off to Steve at RetroTech. Oh, yeah, uh, right. I'll be able to do a miracle. Yeah. No, so there was only one saving, like, grace I was telling. I was like, there's only one reason I'm not just, like, 
trashing all over this listing before it ended. And that's because the seller had a 30 day return policy. Yes. So I was like, well, I mean, that's built into this and eBay is not going to let him get out of that. So, um, at least it was like, you get it and you could and, test it. And it was seller pays return shipping. Yeah. That's another thing. So you could really make them like that. They would really be. <laughs> that, yeah. Cause that, then you could that make that all cost my mind shake, but it was not like a, a lesson I was willing to teach a company for 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to be like, I wasn't going to like let 10 grand go and, uh, yeah. Can I get that 10 grand back? I don't want this. And then like play the whole eBay return game. They probably would have, yeah. but, but yeah, that's that one. Uh, that one kind of irked me a little bit, but yeah, I was glad it had a return policy, but I didn't even see. So what were you saying? An a for 12 K when did that there, happen? Yeah. There was the same day an a 32 oh, sold yeah, for 12 K. Just, I didn't even see that one. And um, the A32, that's, like you say, there's no other choice. It's eBay, or if you don't know, if you're not in the know, you don't know how to find resellers, or yeah. it doesn't magically drop in your lap. Yeah, well, my, I know my... that if you go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say I've been I've been on the hunt for a like I, I was telling Steve I'm like going through college I'm like well I can't afford a I can't afford to drop two hundred you know two or a few hundred dollars on a PVM, but once I graduate and I get a real adult job, then I'll have some money to spend on it. And then like I graduated in January, 2021. So it's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so no, we're CRTs. Laughing. Yeah. It's like not, it's not unless, I mean, unless you have some ridiculously, and there are people out there that do, unless you just have like a ridiculously amount of expendable income, you should not be buying D32s and, and most likely D24s just like off eBay and stuff. Um, but if you contact somebody like Save on Pat, and he does come into these rarely, but he will find D24s. But he'll be honest. I mean, I think the last one he said they usually sell, he's like, they'll sell between ten and $12,000 if they're working. So that's a right price. But the scarier thing is, is that it's just a straight eBay seller. That again, just probably got this thing. Mm. You know, how often does an eBay seller go and recycle something? They get paid, and then they found out basically they're selling like a, a used car that people want. I mean, that's how much money they're getting. It's like, that's that's a huge bonus check. It's one thing to spend ten grand on a monitor from Pat. It's right. Another thing to spend it off a rando from eBay. Yeah, yeah. and that's kind of. Um, yeah, like that. the The sales kind of stuff has been crazy. I, I, there was a, there, there was the. I don't. Do you, Shank? Did you ever see that one listing on eBay that would come up over and over again? And it's like a fake D thirty two listing, and it would always start off as an auction, and it's like two dollars, and it's some kind of weird scheme. Um. It uses these same old pictures from like somebody who listed one years ago. And then they somehow hack and make these eBay accounts with like thousands of positive feedbacks. And somehow, yet they've never sold any, they don't have any other items listed. It'll just be like this huge, and it's, it's always, and then you get into the sale and it's always, this is a pawn shop. Uh, please do not bid on this. Just send your money to this. And like it's obviously a scam, right? I mean, mm. and every time it gets flagged for scam. Yeah, I've seen I'm the same one with a with a Shrek Shrek CRT. Yeah, with a, really. The new in box. Yeah, yeah. I see it pop up like in my notifications like once a once a week or so. Uh, the Shrek CRT new in box um, <laughs> pops up and it says, "This is only do not bid on this. You yeah. You have to." Um, buy for me directly here's like a thing but whenever you click on the listing it's like gone like it's like it pops up and then it's gone it's weird i'm wondering if they moved on from the d series to the, the shrek to the, the shrek, shrek crt because they're like oh there's too much heat on the fake bvms let's move over to the shrek yeah. crt which that in itself man, surprised never, they're not doing the hot wheel like, monitors 
I never yeah. knew like CRTs would become like that's the meme culture for it is is the Shrek CRT like the most mainstream thing is the, I've been is the Shrek I've been looking CRT. for one since like 2014, but I think I think it's not. I've had a few people reach out to me that say they have them, but the thing is they're all in like Canada and Mexico. So based off what I'm gathering, like they were only sold in Canada and Mexico, which is why in the United States they aren't common. But there, you can find them quite easily. Which Sounds is like road trip time to me. Yeah, yeah. From Texas, let's let's do it. Oh yeah, yeah. you're just right there, man. Like, uh, yeah, you try to tell that to the border guards while you go over. To Look, Mexico. man, I, I I have to do it for Shrek. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that, sh uh, Shank. We're gonna find somebody's gonna contact us, and they're gonna say they have a storage unit in the middle of nowhere mexico and it's got full 200, of shrek. 200 box <laughs> shrek crt flood the market let's do it <laughs> yes yeah, so we'll just flood the market with them and then everybody will have one and no one will want them again yeah. and we'll buy them all back for cheap prices yeah because like i've had the i i've had the hello kitty one the superman the spongebob the cars lightning McQueen? Yeah. yeah the lightning mcqueen yeah. I Light McQueen one drives me crazy because <laughs> no, this will drive you crazy. So it has two composite inputs, one in the front, uh -huh. one in the back. You cannot change the input to composite without a remote. And it does uh, not work with any standard universal remote from any of the codecs. I'm oh, trying. it doesn't. Oof, so you need awful. that specific remote to set it to composite at all. That's, in that's my, terrible. <laughs> In my I've video, got... oh. oh, go ahead, yeah. In my video, oh. I had a Shrek CRT playing Halo on it because I was just so committed to having <laughs> not the Shrek, the the cars. I was so committed to having that in there. So, <laughs> uh, let, let, here's here's the signal chain. I was playing Halo One on a Lightning McQueen CRT, and it was there for a few seconds. Here was my signal chain. It's gonna just make you cringe. So we're going Display Port to VGA. Run in VGA into an extra on DSC. Um, I mean, not a DSC, a v, VSC 500. VCS. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Video so, scan converter or so whatever that, they are. Yeah, VSC, and it puts it to 480i composite. Then from the 480i composite, I ran it to a jerry rigged uh, one of those Nintendo RF adapter things. RF converters that I was powering off of USB plugged into the computer <laughs> to get the RF into the car's TV. Just for it one looked, shot. Yeah, just for like a few seconds. Like, go back at the very end. You'll see me playing Halo for like three seconds. Like, that was like, t like, like the, the, like, amount of MacGyvering I had to do on that. Oh like, the, behind the setup was so jank. So, you can't do any composite at all without the remote. Correct. And I think every time you unplug it, you still need the remote to set it back. You do, I yeah. I, I have another TV that's similar. My RCA, that is the uh, the knockoff. It's not. It's it's like a. It's the translucent green one. It's like a jail TV, but it's not because it was. You know, they like sold the jail ones, which were all clear, and then they were like, "Well, let's sell some that are not all clear." Is like cool. So it's like the Heineken TV, only it doesn't yeah. have Heineken on it. Yeah, it's the same way. You can't like, but you can use a universal remote for that one, thankfully. But you, every time you turn it off, it'll go right back to um, RF, and then you, it actually has a menu. But you turn the menu on, there's no way to get to composite from the menu. Yeah, it's, Shank, when you oh sorry, go ahead. I, I was just saying, yeah, it makes the Shrek's uh, makes the cars CRT I didn't know like that. like to me almost worthless. I'm gonna give it away to one of my friends. Unless but, it has a remote, right? Uh, yeah, if it, and it's annoying because for me, I would use it to take to melee tournaments because it's the right size. Like those, um, those character ones have always been popular for melee stuff because they're they're ones made at the end, so you know in the two thousand three to six era, so they look pretty good. At least in my opinion, you may disagree, but they look acceptable for a easy to find CRT of that size, and. Uh, yeah, but that if I 
if I don't have the remote and you have to lug that with you and do that every time, it just makes it not worth it. Was that jury rig thing that you said? Now it dawned on me what you meant. Was that the the um, the adapter that Nintendo that it comes from the like a Super Nintendo multi out? Yes. That output it. Oh, okay, right. That I outputs gutted RF. it. Yeah, I gutted it. Ran composite wires to it. <laughs> so I, I where soldered... the multi out would usually have composite. So you ran yeah. it on. Yeah, I, I soldered composite <laughs> and ground to it, yeah. um, and then soldered five volts you know, from a spliced composite cable and then soldered five volts and ground from a spliced USB cable and ran to power it and ran that to my computer. To the, <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> it was snow well, you, everywhere. So, so yeah, so you did build a, uh, you did build a composite to RF <laughs> device there we go. pretty much. Yeah. There you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> With those remotes. all that for a show, for for just a, a little shot. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> I did not know that about the McQueen TV. I've I've I can't tell you how many moms how many soccer moms on Facebook Marketplace I've got into argument about that TV because they always think it's worth seventy five to hundred bucks and I'm like, No. <laughs> now I really know it's not. Well has it got yeah. the remote? Then it might be worth seventy five yeah. yeah. hundred bucks. <laughs> It, it it may actually I may be wrong. It could work with other remotes, and I could have a broken um, oh uh, infrared IR receiver sensor. Yeah, that's um, true. But I mean, I don't know. So, Is it possible to have uh like I don't know much about IR remotes, but can they learn? Like, if someone had the proper one, would it po would it be possible to have a unit that like reads it and learns it so that we could put that information out there? I mean, it could use one that's already out there. There's so many mm. that I didn't try them all. Like, <laughs> there's so <laughs> many codes. I tried as many as I could from any of the manufacturers that, like, um, could be listed. You know, they had a Disney one. I had the ones that, like, a, a few different manufacturers that said they made ones for Disney and stuff. You know, just tried out. And I tried a bunch of the common brands ones. And I'm just like, all right, I don't think I'm getting anywhere it's time for, you know... Time for plan B. Time for plan B, jerry-rigging <laughs> in snow. <laughs> the MacGyver. All right. So, Shank, you're, you're obviously a... Uh, we were ta you were talking about graduating college in 2001. Or t 2001. 2021, sorry. Yeah, 21. 2001. That was when I graduated. See, that's like... <laughs> yeah. a, so, younger guy, when was... Like, what is it about CRTs that, like, gets you excited? I mean, for, like, me and Lewis, we grew up and there weren't, like, flat screens. So it's, like, super nostalgic for us, obviously. Okay. I'll let you guess. What do, what do you think? I, I've given you all the hints you need for it so far. It's Melee. You're right. Yeah. Spot on. Okay. So um, w what happened was, and it wasn't even, like, competitive Melee. Me and my brother, we... It was like when I got a when I first got a GameCube, it was the first game I bought. Like Melee was the first video game, like real video game I bought. Like I had some like kitty PC, you know, educational games, but like my first real video game I bought was Melee. And me and my brother played that just like religiously. And we would come home from school and just play it every day. And when Brawl came out, you know, the sequel came out years later, we were hyped for it and we played it for a few weeks and we're like Let's go back to the other one. It feels faster. You know, like we were middle schoolers and we were just like, this one just feels better. We could, we didn't have the words. We didn't know it was floaty or any of this other stuff to us. It was just like, we liked the fast responsive speed and it just, we, it was faster. We enjoyed it more. So then we got, I remember we got, um, when I finally got a, I was running everything through RF. So I got an Xbox 360 and I moved a bit to, um, uh, so my brother had the the old CRT with RF with a RF modulator, and I got a flat screen TV, you know, 720p crappy one. Um, this was like 2010. Um, it was like a 768 resolution, uh, 32 inch, you know, Black Friday special, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and because I was playing Xbox 360 on RF on a CRT. I couldn't read any of the letters. 
Um, I was off. You were was playing off. three. Wait, you were playing 360 through RF under the. CRT. Listen, listen, man. I, when you're when you're in middle school, it was a TV where half of it was like discolored yellow and like it, like it had a segment here discolored yellow, a segment here discolored blue. Right. I bought game. that. The the power button was missing, so you had to reach inside and press something in it to make it work. <laughs> and I bought that thing for twenty bucks, and to this day, it is the best twenty dollar purchase I'd ever made. Like, because I finally had yes, be- it started all this. Because before, I had we had a nine inch composite CRT with so much overscan, we I couldn't even tell how many lives I had in melee. Um, okay. So. With the built-in VCR. So this was, like, game changer. Like, to this day, I, I've never been happier with a $20 purchase. Like, I threw that in my room. And when I got, you know, the flat screen 32-inch, I gave that to my brother. And I played the Xbox 360 on that. And then we had in that in the other room where we played together. We played Melee on that. And eventually, um, when uh, we we tried hooking Melee up to my TV. And we're just like... This feels like garbage. Like, we didn't know why. Like, we didn't know anything about... Yeah, when we hooked it up to the flat screen, to the, you know, to the 2010 flat screen, felt like garbage. And we didn't know why. We didn't understand. You know, we were just, like, middle school and high school or didn't... All this stuff. We're like, this feels like trash. We plugged it back into the old school TV. You know, felt like trash, looked like trash. And they were like, yeah, this is much more like it. Like, we didn't know. We just... Knew it felt good. And eventually, I I learned that, like, oh, I'm not crazy. There's this cult of other crazy people who play Melee competitively. Like, you know, when I started going to college, I learned there was a competitive scene of people who thought the new <laughs> ones felt slow and floaty and thought flat screens felt bad compared to CRTs. And I'm like... I'm not crazy. Like, you know, I felt just completely validated and um, all that stuff. And I'm like, well, awesome. And then um, I was uh, taught a bunch about, um, I was given a lot of not so good information on that, uh, that the lag was caused by the analog to digital conversion. And if you bypassed that, and you did a direct digital HDMI solution, you know, this stuff isn't true. But mm-hmm. if you did that, then it would get rid of all the lag and the flat screen would be lag free, which isn't really true. Um, no, because even at can, HD, I mean, we've proved that you proved that the time sleuth wouldn't yeah. need to exist if this was. And a- analog to digital conversion can be lag free if it doesn't have a frame buffer. So yeah, that's yeah. that that is not true. It, the conversion can be laggy or it can be lag free. And just because it's all digital doesn't mean it's lag free on a flat mm-hmm. screen. And I thought that, so I drifted away towards, and I went back to using flat screens. And then um, I, I met a friend of mine. He goes by um, the online alias Ciro. Um, but he was like, I was still into CRTs, but I was kind of like into the flat screen. And he got me back hooked into CRTs. It's like, oh, but the aesthetic, like, and I'm like, you're right. It does look better. You know, and it, it does feel better. You're right. Like, I don't know. And so he <laughs> he introduced me. He's like, yo, have you heard of PVMs? You know, this is like 2014. And I'm like, what are those? And he's like, they're like CRTs, but better. You know, like, and then PC CRTs. Like, and he got me hooked on, like, the, the rabbit hole of, like, all this stuff. And he's always been my enabler and my one of my best friends, like, helping me. He helped me find my FW900. Um and he's helped me find a few others and we've just been basically each other's enablers of CRTs and stuff. So well, that's good. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the, it's good to have uh, a, so does he have more CRTs than you or do you have more than him? I have more than him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have. This, um, this he, brings up a good question about your storage and what is going on <laughs> in your place, Shane. He lives in Texas, so at least he's got yeah, more space, so, you know? Yeah. So I live in Texas. I have um, this this room I'm in, my lab. Uh, this is my lab. Uh, I have 11 feet by 9 feet. That's my entire working area. Hmm. So right now I've been trying to 
save up to you know move somewhere else um, with more space. Um, we have a uh, living room area that I share with the roommates, and uh, they one of them my one of them my brother plays melee, and so he's on board, and the other one's um, neutral. Bat. He's like, you know, if, if we still have a flat screen setup here where I can do it, then sure. You know, he's like, this is a cool setup. You know, he gets to use it, so mm. um, he's not complaining. The um, For the while, it was all contained in my room, like, stacked on shelves and all this stuff. I've, I've got a whole bunch of them stacked on shelves in my room um, like crazy, and it was only recently after the Hot Wheels, and, and I have some in the attic, and it was only recently with the Barbie um, video that I have. I have a single shelf, like a four-foot-wide shelf, wire rack shelf that I have all the Barbie and Hot Wheels PC stuff and I have it contained to that. So so um, it's it's the kind of thing where I have a lot of them but a lot of them are like small off-brand PPMs and then other ones are like 21 inch PC CRTs where you can stack them on shelves. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. So the only like really big ones I have are are like three twenty one in three twenty seven inch uh, consumer Trinitrons, and uh, two of those Panasonics. Where one I have in the garage, which I, my parents are going to store till I move into a new place. <laughs> my goal is I want to set up four of those Panasonics. Like I, I want to set up two Panasonics on each side with a uh, consumer Trinitron in the middle, and then four flat screens above, and, and just have it be an awesome like. Land party setup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to. Um, I don't know. This was like pre. This was year would have been about 1999 or 2000, and it was like when Counter Strike first came out and was getting cool. And there were these new shops called Land Shops, and I remember there was a guy that came into our town and he he uh poor guy he w he would have been probably about my age and i just remember him losing his ass on that business like investing thousands of dollars in these top end machines and it was again every like 25 high end pcs on a land party and kids would come and pay 10 bucks an hour to play games in this land party and it was incredible but but yeah, that it was it was an awesome memory, and it always I always try to like think about you know man, it's so hard to recreate that much cool like land, and then have so many people pumped where you'd have like a weight of people wanting to play. Yeah, because I want to recreate I want to recreate the Matrix. I discovered Matrix switches, and it was like a hard drug, like harder than like CRTs for me. Like once <laughs> I discovered Matrix switches, like there was no turning back. I'm just like. Oh man, like the possibilities are limitless. I wonder, yeah, has anyone those, those made so money from but when, back when gaming cafes were a thing? Exactly what Steve said. They spent a lot of money, 25. Did any of them actually make money in the end for the amount of hardware and investment? I can't see it. The I guy, don't the know. guy, the guy that, like, that was the pad thing. Like, the guy that we followed his store my friend ended up working there we go there all the time and they, it was like two years in and his wife she would always come there and yell at him because he was there all the time right mm. he's running this business and it's got to be open all the time because the hardware is always there so it's like kids will be there playing until midnight money, fridays yeah. mm. so she would always come in yelling at him and like i remember like i said it was like two years later he she his wife left him He's sitting in his business. No one's coming in anymore. And it's like, it was just like the cool thing till basic. This was the cool thing till basically everybody got started to get more Xbox access to Live. this hardware. Xbox, mm -hmm. exactly. Xbox, the home system got there. The PlayStation 2 was already out. It had internet capabilities. This was a growing thing that you couldn't just bottle in a little, mom, you know, short storefront. And expect to really, I think, long term have that business work out. Yeah, because um, LAN parties are. I, I, you know, on the Nintendo side, I didn't really get much of the LAN experience. But whenever I set some stuff up with Xbox with friends, that was a lot of fun. Um, 
and I think that's I think that'd be really cool to be able to have that you know I, I want to set that up in a way having the matrix set up there so you it's been really cool because we can have you know for a while we had three consumer trinitrons hooked up to a matrix switch with three Wii's so you could run three different setups at the same time or you could have um, one setup where it b- broadcasts the same game to every single screen and everyone can watch like it's a sports bar. Or yeah. you can set up, if you have 1v1, you know, each person sitting with their own monitor. Or if you have teams, you have two people on one monitor, two on the other. Um, and, you know, or, you, you know, or if t- people were already playing, you know, you don't have to wait in line because if someone's already playing, you're just like, oh, I want to play the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo, TV3, enter, sit down and play. Then so, you have a feed to the bathroom. So, like, when you got to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and like make sure nobody's cheating. Just, like, have a monitor in there. I see what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 more about just, like, um, for me, video games. I don't. I like the idea of video games more than actually playing them. I've reached that age where it becomes, like, a social activity. Mm. Um, so having it set up where it's a cool thing for people to do rather than, like, because anytime I'm playing video games, it's multiplayer stuff, and it's in a social environment. So having the best setup um, possible for multiplayer stuff, because that's how I do, um, would be everyone having their own screens. And so, you know, that's why I'm trying to track down four of these towels. I've got two now, a lead on a third. But um, <laughs> having all that it's- set up. It sounds awesome. Like this, it sounds like you're, I mean, it's what you, you said. I mean, you're about a year out of college. So you still sort of, again, Steve and I are old guys, right? I'm just kind of comparing to that. But I'm thinking back when we had the share house in college with Jay, the, the cable guy that I've mentioned on here before. We had uh, those massive 20, 21 inch sun monitors that we got from the auctions back then. And if I think back, like you said, oh, you're a college student with no money. We also had no money, so we must have got them cheap. I don't remember how expensive they were. We had the first PlayStation that we were trying to mod chip. Uh, I think we we ruined a PlayStation because we couldn't even mod ship it properly. And this is like, oh my yeah. God, how did we lose so much money? And we couldn't even repair it and things like that. I mean, that's the good, that's the good stuff oh, yeah. that you got to do while you can. Now I sound really old, I realize. Yeah. Do it while you can, but oh, yeah. fuck yeah. Oh yeah, the... Uh, that's that's my thing is I love to have a setup like that because you know taking the stuff I've learned while living here and applying that to um, my own setup I'm like rather than having you know some people have like a room with a big TV mm. you know rather than I found that rather than one t- big TV what what I've used way more is having a bunch of smaller ones hooked up to a video switch so then it can be a way more social um and fun environment and using old just rather than just like you know craigslist tvs you know i get for like Mm. 20 bucks each like that's been the best bang well all this it's like like you know four tvs you know all this stuff sounds crazy but i you know you can get this stuff set up for less than the price of a single flat screen and i think i'd get way more enjoyment out of it I think that's something that, yeah, we, we're always sitting here, we we're talking about like the prices of these insanely expensive um, setups, but retro gaming, you still can get pretty much the cheapest and best experience. I mean, you get like 75 to 90% there just by going and finding something that does composite and S video, especially if that's- you get a good set and then you literally are 90%. And if you're in mm. North America, you're ninety percent of where you need to be, unless that's, you like dive into like the next level, kind of. You know, that's what that's, I that's what I keep telling people. Like, find a good consumer set with component video in. Yeah, and you're done. Like, you're you're yeah. good. Like beyond there, yes, it does get better. You can get better results, but like that's when you have to like go crazy for it. Like the the diminishing returns beyond that. 
or like, come come to Europe and everything is RGB Scott. That's like yeah. a thing. It was the legal yeah. thing or something, right? Well, so, get out of here with your fifty hertz. <laughs> you and... can't even. Yeah, yeah, true, <laughs> true. I've got that slow Sonic. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, like there, here's the thing though. He's got in Europe. They've got those B and O TVs. You've seen those, right? I mean, I wish I could I get not... one of those. The Bang and Olufsen. Oh yeah, the... yeah. Oh, those are awesome. Bang and yeah, Olufsen. They're like they're real thin as well for a yeah, CRT. They're real they had stylish. Some... My girlfriend wants one. She's like, actually, just today we made a, how to say, a negotiation and the 20-inch <laughs> Trinitron was taken out of the lounge room. It's fine. I've I, I got, I, I've been able to put more TVs into here instead. But the one, she saw them and she loves interior design. She said, you find that B&O, it'll go in the lounge room. And I'm like, there you oh, go. okay. All right. You need to get yeah. one, Lewis, because like nobody, yeah, nobody in our scene does the videos or anything on the them. B&O. There's one guy that's got them locally, but he... um. Charges that a one lot guy that charges too much. Yeah, it's that one yeah, electronics guy I did. Yeah. yeah, I heard this is like really nice one. But the other one is, oh, who we were talking to? Martin. Martin in Denmark. So I got to go for that road trip down there. He said they're, because B&O yes. comes from Denmark. So he said there's still dime a dozen uh, yeah. or dime a euro or whatever. Euro a dozen <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> in, in Denmark specifically. So, okay, that's... Uh, well, in in America, there's been one brand of TVs I saw at a show that was one of the most beautiful shadow mask TVs, and uh, it was called Fisher, and it's just F I. And then I found out that they were like a real high end hmm. um, AV company in like the late nineties, and uh, I was really though I was super pissed because this was one of the one I was at the show and I was riding around with my camera filming every single TV and I was like yes I want to get to that Fisher and when I got to it it was already dead like the power but it, it had just like the power there was a short circuit or there was a uh, cold solder joint probably from it running and it just was like dead after that so I was kind of upset I didn't get to film it. But I've been like hunting one of those now ever since, and uh, I just I just never find them. I think they're like the B and O though. They were they were a higher end. Like they also made a bunch of audio gear and stuff. Actually, okay. talking of obscure brands, Steve, um, I keep I keep seeing them and I keep forgetting to pick one up because you know back in the day Nokia used to make all kinds of crap. They were one of those companies yeah. that made all before they like I remember I I have friends who used to work for Nokia in Finland and they they tell the story of like how they basically stumbled across these mobile phone things and that became their thing but nokia used to make uh tires i think they were nokian they still make them under that brand but i still see locally nokia branded crts and uh like have you guys uh, ever heard of that or, before consumers or pc consumer consumer i have not seen consumer headsets. ones i've heard of um i've heard of like pc uh mm. vga tubes but not PC, okay, I gotta get ones. clearly. I gotta get one of these and make a video about it then, because it's so almost so regular. And even Nokia around here is like a eh, you know so so brand. But it just dawned on me. Of course, you've never seen a Nokia TV, and it's but it's the most common thing around here. All right, it's our B and O. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, There's... we have like Sh Sony, Sharp, Zenith. You know, like lots of. There's we a don't lot have of any... weird brands that came yeah. out too, like after mm. 2000. All these, all these real strange, like you never heard of them. And then uh, some of the other ones that actually I thought were kind of impressive on a consumer end from the show I went to. And some of these did not even have component video built into them, but there were some pretty good looking, like even Emerson TVs. So you can't. Hmm. It's really hard. Sometimes you can go look at something and you can look at some of these like Emerson brands sitting right next to a Sony and you're like, well, no one talks about Emerson's, but this actually looks better than this certain yeah. Sony style or something. You know, it's because yeah, it, so they happens. bought because they bought tubes from other people. You know, they weren't vit vertically integrated. So depending on like you could have two different um, you could have, you know, like with Sony's, you're always going to get a Sony tube, but with the other brands like. Well, what are you getting? Um, like this little, like that little VGA CRT over there, that's got a Samsung tube. In it. And I actually okay. think Samsung PC tubes. My brother has a Samsung PC tube. Um, it's like a, it's a little like 17 incher or something around that area, that size class. 
and it is looks really good um like it's i i you know it was just a i got it at a thrift store for like seven bucks years ago never used it he wanted to play melee online on it and he was like and i'm like oh if you're gonna do that then here use this vga crt and i helped him hook it up and, you know he's been playing on that and every time i come up there to say you know drop by tell him something i see him playing on it and i'm like dang that looks really good yeah <laughs> And he's like, you can't have it, right? Yeah, yeah. he's Tom, like, Tom, mine to take it. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Well, what do you think? Um, I don't know that uh, I had anything else. I mean, we covered everything here on my my lovely list, except for one last thing. I didn't know how much how much time Lewis had. We could talk about this briefly. Okay, yeah, I'm good on time. Uh, yeah, we were talking. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, we were talking about a Sony PVM that you just gotten recently, right? A uh, 20 M2? Was it yes. MDU? Yeah, I got an M2 MDU. Yeah, so he was, it was fun. Shank was sitting here and he's like, the menu button doesn't work on here. And I was like, yeah, that happens. I was like, unfortunately, you know, it's a pain in the ass. You got to take that monitor 100% apart, pretty much, yeah. to get to that button board. And then... He's like, what if I do this? What if I do that? What if I do this? And then I, it was funny because then he, I was like, yeah, you could end up doing all that work. But at the same time, it's like you just got to eventually go in there and get that stupid yeah. button board. Yeah, you know, I was I was in denial. I'm just like, I don't want to take the whole thing <laughs> apart. Like, you know, can I just like, you know, I'm like, well, can I buy a remote for it? Can I just like I'm like, can I solve this? Like, this is such a pain in the butt. Can I just solve this with, m just, like, by spending money instead of doing this? Like, um, and, uh, um, you know, I'm like, can I do a serial command? Can I do all, is it lockout? Like, because if I opened this up and I wasn't the menu button, you know, and I did all that work and that didn't solve it, I would have just, like, <laughs> wouldn't have, yeah, want, well, I wouldn't have wanted I like, to put it back together. I was like, yeah, I was like, well, if it doesn't, yeah, the bad thing, the the problem with all that is, is that you have to take it all the way apart and then you have to put it all the way back together just to test it to see if it actually worked, right? So I, um, I was like, you're like, oh, you have to hit, take the whole tube out. And I'm like, N I refuse to accept that, like <laughs> just in denial. And so I found a way to just like flip it upside down and like lift the the like bottom off of it like the whole bottom off of the the crt and like i had a box of hard drives you know that was like the perfect height and so i had the top of the like crt the the t upper case like leaning on that and then i could barely get my screwdriver in there like and i could do it by feel and i was able to get the all all six of those screws out and opened it up cleaned it up with contact cleaner and then i pressed it and it was working and then, you know, I'm just like, victory! <laughs> yeah, he was like, I did it. I was like, yes. But I was laughing because I was sitting there. When I when people send me stuff like this, I start playing like Columbo or like uh, Murder, She Wrote. I'm like on the case trying to figure out what's going on with this thing. I'm looking at these pictures and it's this beautiful 20M2, except when you look down, there's like, you can tell like there's somebody with greasy p fingers where like whoever owned this before had gotten grease all over the handles and i was like i bet you that person had greasy fingers hit the menu button so much the grease got under the button and then yeah, now it's not it working gross. and it is like ah oh. so i was like well that's good at least my uh i'm starting to get a little bit better at that remote diagnosis yeah it was um it was quite but how long did that take you like to do that little job oh maybe like an hour or two like yeah. it, it wasn't maybe like an hour or two it was it didn't take that long mostly it was it was like half of that was just me complaining on the crt discord <laughs> like just like you know the kind of thing how how many of me you know how many whatever does it take to screw in a light bulb you need one to actually do it and a few more to complain about it you know um <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel you. I've got three 14 M2 MDUs, and they all have a button doing the same thing. Every single one of them has just one button, 
and it's it's like not it'll be like the up arrow or like the select button and I'm, I've got to do the same thing on all them and it's just such a it's not like you say at the end of the day you're like yeah that took an hour or two and it's it's like not that much but it's it feels like such a daunting task to well, literally the, disassemble it for such a small issue the, the worst part is it wasn't really that i was worried about spending an hour or spending an hour or two on it i was worried about spending several hours and getting nowhere and then like being like i just wasted so much time and you know what i mean just the yeah that kind of that that feeling of defeat where it's like you, you get what I mean. Like, I'm like, I don't want to, yeah. if I'm going to have to take this all apart and then it's not going to work and I'm going to have to put it back together and then I'm going to have to st- find another time to go back and spend more hours taking it apart and putting it back together because if I leave it apart, then I'm going to forget where all the screws go. You know, just... Um, yeah, that's that was kind of like my experience with both the Retro NOS and the, <laughs> the Mr. <laughs> it's like I, I don't know what I was doing. I was like, "What am I doing?" You know, just kept screwing the things up and having to reset them. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's all that that troubleshooting. It's it's just starts to drive me crazy. Yeah, and there's also when you take the PVM apart, it is you're getting you know, twenty different screws there. Mm-hmm. You're like, because huh? I I could tell you that's that's the biggest tell when I get a monitor into the shop if someone's been in it before. I'm like, oh well, n- these screws are supposed to be inside, and those inside. I was like, so yeah, you somebody's been in here before. Yeah, and I just, um, I was glad, you know, I was like, if this is what the issue is, and I can fix, you know, then I have no problem spending the time. It's that I didn't want to spend the time and have that not, be, not the be, issue. be the issue, and then yeah. I'm just like, yeah, because I'm I'm juggling, as I told you, I'm juggling. Uh, full-time full-time job with the youtube stuff with the business startup with four layer tech so i'm doing so what do you what do you want is there anything you can uh, you can or want to talk about your business venture uh with four layer tech we're um it's basically me and aurelio and gunner who uh those two guys are smarter than me i'm the kind of like business marketing side of things um or Gunner has a electrical engineering degree and is probably the best like portableizer on planet Earth. And Aurelio is has a um, doctorate in electrical engineering. So, uh, we, and we're wow. you know we do all the like portableizing stuff, making stuff into portables, and we want to bring make that hobby more accessible. That's kind of our goal, and make you know work our way up to doing that full time so we can make uh cool and crazy projects for the you know community full time so that's kind of you know we've got the n64 forever pack which is just a it's a non-volatile memory pack for the n64 yeah which is pretty cool yeah that is cool so are those your two part or your two business partners there? Are they, are they in the same, like, I mean, are they, are these people that you've known for a long time? Yes. These are members of the bit built and portabilizing community. So I can, they're two of my best okay. friends and okay. we started it together um, to try to make, you know, we want to make, make this hobby accessible to everyone. Cause you know, when I first got into the hobby, I didn't know how to solder and I learned and I th- through this hobby I learned basically everything I know about electronics which allowed me to make my channel and uh, you know it was a cool thing that I was able to do myself so I've been able the, to do a lot I saw on the website for your company that you, you're selling a lot of PCBs that help the the modders uh, to to do these modifications is that the core of the business making these add-on uh, yes. PCBs Yes, we want to uh, the the we want to expand more and more. But for now, it's how do we meet the needs of the community the most effectively with our time and resources available. Mm. So we developed modular boards. So we have one that handles all the power management and uh, battery management and all that stuff, and it interfaces with the Wii, so you can update it. Uh, 
and shows information on the screen using software with the Wii. And, uh, like, it controls the fan speed, displays all sorts. It's, like, ridiculously um, professional, all the tools you would expect in a modern, like, battery-powered device. Like, it throws all those into Wii portables. And it's modular, so you can design your own. It uses, like, these castellated pads, so you can design your own circuit board and then buy ours and just stick it on there. Or you can just run wires straight to where you want if you don't want to design a circuit board. So, and we have the same for an audio amp, you know, that does analog audio for any system because it's just analog audio or digital audio for the Wii, Dreamcast, and PlayStation 2. And it does headphones and it, you can plug it, you know, it does headphones where if you plug it in, it'll automatically mute the speakers and you can have analog or digital volume controls or also there's so much like configuration it's like the size of like a nickel <laughs> so you said you were the i mean you, you you've got the background in business and marketing so you're the business guy so i'll ask you the business question about yeah. this you know these products these pcbs that you're producing is this an is this enough to sustain your business and for you guys to take it where you want to go uh potentially Okay. The thing is, using these uh, using these boards on their own, it's still not quite as accessible as we want. But the modularity of it will allow us to integrate them into other potentially larger project products and projects that are more, um, I guess you could say, start to finish involved. Uh, an example I can give was uh, with two of the members used to be on the. Uh, on the Bitbelt store, which was um, a previous store with a community with another uh, person who decided to leave the community uh, and doing, for example, portableizing kits like the G boy um, was a very, was the kind of thing where they could, um, they had the potential to be a full-time business out of that. But we have, a okay. Few... So if you make it much easier, then you can grow that market size, that addressable market size. Kind of exactly. Thing. There's, okay. um, there's a few ways right now. A lot of what we're doing is foundational work mm. to set up and meet the community's needs to keep it afloat through the chip shortage. Oh. Um, and right. we're, we're setting up a lot of, and mostly because you want to be slow about these things. You want to make yeah, sure not sure. to grow too fast. So you can make sure you have a really good product out. So, and we can troubleshoot. Like there's, right now we have something called the Ashita kit, which is, um, it's a, let me grab it if that's all right. Yeah. So hold on, let me go grab it. Interesting. I was going to pull it out of one of those 800 yeah, bins right behind him. Like, oh, I love right how enthusiastic he is. <laughs> the other podcast I watch with Shank, he's always so enthusiastic to show stuff. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is cool stuff. Yeah, yeah I didn't really right. even realize the, um, the extent of this business venture yet. So, um, right now, so check this out. Okay. Cool. So this is a complete Wii portable that's open there. It's open source and anyone can build it. Uh -huh. So, and it uses actual, so it's, this is, this case is 3d printed. You can see mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty smooth finish because it's resin printed. Um, you know, it's a little grainy because my environment's a little dark, sure. but, uh, so there's a full Wii inside of it, and then it uses actual GameCube controller parts. So this has all our boards in it, and they're in a modular way where you can just solder it on. And this is the... You can download the case and print it yourself or have a shop mm -hmm. print it. You can... Um, and you can... There's not a full step-by-step -step guide, but you can see work logs and stuff from other people have to... Anyone could build this today. What about boards. the um, to taking an original Wii? Do you still need to cut a Wii PCB to make that work? Yes, you do need to cut it, and it cuts it down about to the size of the credit card. And we have the comprehensive guides on how to do that, and it's gotten you know more and more accessible with the 
with thanks to the power management stuff, like you don't have to build your own regulators or anything like that. Um, and with something like this, you can it's it's such a straight you don't even have to design your own case. Mm. So the case is there. It has screw mounts for all the components. You know, it's got USB-C power delivery for like high speed charging, mm -hmm. you know, the internal flash drive. So if you to access the games, it has an internal flash drive with switching. So if it's off and you plug in power, it disconnects the flash drive from the Wii to the USB-C port. So you can load games just by plugging in a cable when it's off and dragging and dropping games onto it. So. Oh, wow. I can see that. the gears turning in Steve's head right now. This is his next project. <laughs> get so much sure. stunner. I get so. <laughs> yeah. So, this thing will run Wii and GameCube games 100% perfectly because it's mm -hmm. native hardware, and it also some people will be like, "Well, what about the motion games?" Uh, Aurelio, our brilliant, brilliant man, he has developed a uh, software that allows you to use the GameCube controller huh. as a Wii remote. So it, well, it it emulates the functions of a Wii remote and you can map them however you want. So like you can map the pointer to be a stick or something like that. And that's at a software level. Um, he designed his own like, um, like kernel and all this stuff mm -hmm. to be able to, uh, what's it called? H handle that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's running VGA on a 480p screen. So you're running 480p video on a 480p screen that's IPS, so it looks awesome. Um, and just that's great, man! I think it's tremendous. Okay, now I see the the vision of where you guys are going to. That yeah, I've, and yeah. we're working our way up to make projects like these more and more accessible, as well as uh, meet other needs in the community that we felt feel are unmet. But the thing is, a lot of it is. It's we're we're going with the slow and steady growth approach rather than just go a whole bunch of money and go hard because we're still having to go, do our. Throw, uh, I don't know. I mean, I have friends in different businesses that do the throw money at stuff, and they don't really understand the slow approach on things. But you can't um, unless your name's like Nvidia or Intel. You can't really be crazy. You know, uh, uh, right now in the tech field, because of just we're we're just, we're all handcuffed in the same we're all in the same situation right now. Well, it's almost like yeah. the chip shortage is the pace car in front of us right yeah, now, you and you just got to yeah. learn how to drive until the pace car you, goes you've away. You've basically got to just sustain yourself so you can make it till that thing gets out of the way, basically, till the pace we car gets off the track. Yeah, we definitely picked the worst time to start up a business, <laughs> uh, start up a chip-based business. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're, you know, projects like these, this was uh, designed by Wesk in the community. So like it's open source, anyone can do it, but we want to, we're, 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 we've been working with him the whole time to streamline the process to make it easier for everyone to do. And so, you, so you're trying to make it more accessible to where it's like, how does this become more of an easy where it's like, yeah, I saw that in Shank's video and yeah, it's uh open source technically but how the heck do i really get from the point of me just seeing this video to being able to possibly make this exactly and right now it's like almost like it's not quite like a kit but what we lay out is basically we have here's everything you need from our store here's a bill of materials from um digikey or mauser where you can buy all the other parts you need, which is just like connectors and basic, you know, basic through hole soldering stuff. Like it's not nothing like too complicated for those parts. The stuff to the Wii is a little more complicated, but and then we're like, here's the screen you use, which we sell. Um, you need these batteries and here's the case. You can print it or you can have someone else print it if you want and get a GameCube controller. So it's like we have a list of all the parts, where to get them. Um, we have wiring diagrams on our website so it's 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 pretty accessible right now and it's polished enough to where lots of people have been making them. uh but okay. we're we're and that's through a lot of the work we've done on like um documentation and um refining the process through lots of people testing it but our you know we're trying to just lo looking into ways of Take, making this more accessible you know just little stuff little details like 
um, being able to reuse the not having to buy screws by by making the screw holes designed to reuse the Wii screws because it has a whole bunch of them. Mm. So, um, you know. So, what little... would you say then is at the current state of this project? As I know, it's evolving, but at the current state, what's the trickiest part of that building that project? I think the trickiest part is. Um, so I'm going to give the the thing that the most people struggle with is um, reading before they dive in. The uh, <laughs> actually t- taking the effort to find the documentation. Hmm. Um, you know, it's obviously not spoon fed because to make a spoon fed um, guide takes a whole bunch of time, and the we have to allocate our time. You know to you know we're working our ways to that but we're trying to get you know you have so many things you got to do you got to focus on certain things um but the hardest part i'd say it's really two there's the hardest part people struggle with the most is reading the guides and reading the documents um like it's okay to ask for help but like you know read through the the do your homework before you ask the professor (laughs) Uh, kind of thing I had in school, and the but the most technical thing is the via soldering to the tiny vias on the Wii um, can be difficult for people who haven't had experience or aren't willing to try flux. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who I don't know why people would be. I don't know why anybody's scared of flux. Yeah, Man, I'm scared of not using flux. I yeah. know, like I had someone convinced, like I've never needed flux. I never did used it. And, I'm like, and the way I explain it, they're like, what does flux do? And I'm like, do you, do you ever wash dishes? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, what if I told you I washed my dishes without soap? Like, I just used water. <laughs> They'd be like, that's crazy. I'm like, well, you can do it. They're like, why would you want to? It's so hard. And I'm like, exactly. Try flux. It's like soap, but for solder joints. And yeah. then I, then they came back in our Discord chat and was like, I'm a born again Christian on this. Like I will tell <laughs> yeah, everyone so you he's you converted. <laughs> Congratulations! I've been converted. It's such a simple. It's such a simple and silly thing. So... I think the idea. I think the idea too is, people can jump into soldering, um, but it, there's so many like choices. It's like, well, which solder do I buy? And, and... sixty three thirty seven, as thin well, as possible, uh, resin core cast. Right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. But see, if you don't, if you don't know that then you're like, why is this different? Why does this difference matter? And do you take the, like you say, a lot of people, and this isn't just in this, I mean, it's really in this whole hobby, anything that's really technical, you gotta, you're going to need to go in and do some kind of studying ahead of time. That's, that's like what I try to tell people to do all the time is like, slow down. This, this is the part, this whole research part. Sure. It takes the, it takes time, but it's the least destructive part of this whole thing. Yeah, like some of the portions of this, some portions of this, you're only going to get one small chance to do this portion that could be screwed up. And if you just jump right into that, you will screw it up. And then your whole project's like shot and you'd feel terrible. Yeah. Why, why, why make expense? What I say is why make expensive mistakes when you can just learn from other people's expensive mistakes? <laughs> when other yeah, people yeah, make yeah. those expense, other people have already made those expensive mistakes for you why don't you just like you know learn from them instead of learning yourself some people insist on learning those mistakes themselves well i mean that's i try to tell people like when i came in to like started working on crts and nobody was documenting anything barely and and knew what was going on i did the thing that no one else did and it wasn't even like crazy i just went and found the service manuals and started <laughs> reading them over and over and over again and i was like what is this you know 300 page service manual now i know all of it and it's so it's like that's how i learned so when i when people are like what do you need to do and i'm like well the first step is find the service manual for whatever you're working <laughs> on read it see what it says yeah, and that's that's what we've got uh, for that. There's there's some tiny soldering on that, and we always say just practice on other stuff. But anyone can do it if they're you know it's the kind of thing. The matter is is it's not a matter of are you skilled enough or are you smart enough. It's a matter of are you willing to put in the time to overcome the skill curve, because mm-hmm. the lessons you learn from it 
will be. And and a lot of people, what they really struggle with is listening to the advice that are given. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They'll be like, hey, I'm looking for a question. Here's your answer. You know, here is answer. And they're like, I don't like that answer. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Please diagnose my CRT problem through this YouTube comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's yeah. Like, it's... uh. That's very cool, man. That's awesome. Um, I I also though could imagine that some a lot of people go on and think they can, you know, like, oh man, I don't know if I can really do that project. Uh, yet they go through, they do the steps the correct, just the way it's laid out, and then they probably pull it off, and at the end feel, you know, the greatest accomplishment in this hobby when you flick that device on and it works. And you're enjoying I, it, and you built it, and you've done what you thought a month earlier you could never accomplish. And for me, what I think is even a bigger deal than that, uh, to me what's even more important is uh, what's even more valuable than walking away with like a completed one of these is making something like this is forces you to learn not just about like how the system works and um, how video works and electronics and about you'll learn stuff about interference. You learn about um, just tiny things. You, 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 you walk away like from learning from making my new portable. I walked away with so much knowledge on like how different things, you know, it's forced me to learn in other areas, which I've been able to use to, um, fix other stuff and you know it was my gateway to electronics but I always tell people was my junior year of high school I was excited to learn about electronics and uh, in physics because in physics we were doing the circuits thing and I tried my hardest and I got like a I when it, we had the test on the on the circuit section utterly bombed it like below a 50 um, and I just said well Guess electronics isn't for me. Like, um, yeah, just and, because of a test, right? Yeah, yeah a written and, test. And because I really wanted to learn it, I really tried. I just accepted that it wasn't something I'm good at. And a lot of it was I just wasn't in the right environment. And that's part of what I've been trying to do with my YouTube channel. It, it overlaps with um, what we're doing for Layer Tech, which is, you know, video game, not just retro video games, but getting people into electronics because it's such a you you never know how much you know like once you learn to use a multimeter you never realize how useful that can be oh unbelievably useful Mm. and i use i mean all these skills are are they are translatable in everyday life they are things that teaching yourself how to learn a new skill and get over those barriers is such a good and important thing because nowadays we have to be able to adapt quickly. Uh, I mean, it's it's a positive for us to be able to have that skill to be able to sit there and learn a new thing. Like you said, that's that's more valuable than just having the device. It's is is the ability to to have because then you can go forward and and every time you come upon something that's new. It's, it, that's kind of a lot of the, the reason I know that Lewis and I love not just doing the show, but a lot of the projects that we like to talk about. We like to go out and like try things that we have no business kind of like, you know, doing or it's like we just like grab a project and gravitate towards it. And that usually in turn, we're having to basically run a small a community college level course in our own heads, you know, on how to learn some of these techniques or whatever that might be yeah and and i've just been so that's i feel so just satisfied from how much i've learned from this and how much the hobby has really given me that i would love other people to get into it and try it because and there's a lot of other stuff where i've had the thing about wheeze is there's a hundred and one million of them and like yeah. everyone and their mom had a Wii, like literally their moms, like par- people's parents had Wii's, mm. like just because of the motion controls. So they're right. so abundant, and it's just such a versatile um, 
you know, platform for people to get into it, I think. Because I I think if if someone like me can pick it up, then I think, like, anyone can pick it up, really. Hmm. All right. Good stuff. What do you think? What do you think, Lewis? Maybe we'll we'll wrap it up there as we're approaching the two-hour mark. It was good, man. Shank, thanks for coming on, man. It was a real nice talk. Thanks for having me. Uh, really interesting to hear about your business as well at the end and uh, and all the stuff that you do it's great just to i don't know just to talk for a bit yeah thank yeah. you thank you guys for having me it was a lot of fun absolutely man yeah keep keep working on this stuff i'm really excited to see how this company goes um because i believe in uh from what i hear on like the mission and the ultimate large picture goal it's uh yeah it's it's refreshing to hear that and I'm glad that um, that's a real need for this. Is I, I feel like people have the need to come in and want to be able to um, easily yeah. get access to this community and, and do these kind of projects. So that's and helpful. For sure. And it's not just it's not just learn electronics projects. We want to. There's lots of needs of the community that like of the retro gaming community and the likes that. Um, you know, either aren't being met or we felt just feel just like aren't being met. Um, there isn't a perfect solution for it. So we'd like to come up with our own solution that would. But we, you know, it's the kind of thing where a lot of this stuff is really expensive and requires big investments. So we're starting first with what we know really well, and that's making Wii portables. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Nice. All right, Shank. Um, stay on the. St- oh, we're gonna hit stop now. Stay on the line because we've got to wait for the upload. So anyway, everyone, thank you much for sitting through our two-hour chat. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, see you on the next episode.